So let's keep moving along the periodic table and keep applying our molecular orbitals. Uh, for example, now with Be2, so beryllium-2 has four electrons in terms of each atom. So you can start by filling those in, and now we can fill in our molecular orbitals as well. This means we need a total of eight, ad or eight electrons in our molecular orbitals. So we have two in the 1s, two in the sigma 1s star, two in the sigma 2s, and two in the sigma 2s star. So let's go ahead and figure out the bonding uh, order for beryllium here. So when we figure it out for beryllium, um, let's see if I wrote in your notes what the actual electron configuration. Okay, that's already in your notes for you. So let's go right to the bond order for beryllium. So for the bond order, we want to take one half of the total number of bonding electrons. So that's going to be four minus antibonding is four. So we end up getting a bond order uh, that's equal to zero. So what I want to point out with this case in beryllium is that you don't have to use all of the electrons to figure out the bond order. And in fact, once you get to really uh, molecules that are from atoms with atomic numbers of 8 or 10, you're not going to want to maybe draw out the full molecular orbital diagram. So what I want to tell you is we also always get the same bond order if we instead only deal with the valence electrons. So let's just prove that to ourselves and figure out the bond order just using valence electrons. So this would mean the bond order is equal to 1 half. And in terms of valence electrons, how many bonding valence electrons do we have? All right, what about antibonding? Two, okay, good. So again, we're going to see uh, that we have a bonding order of zero. So we would not predict to see a BE2 bond. So what we see is a bond order of zero. And again, the bond is very, very weak. Essentially, we're not going to see this. It's nine kilojoules per mole. <laughs> 